This is the LGM30 Minuteman 3, a three-stage solid-fuel intercontinental ballistic missile with a complex guidance system. It's the very backbone of America's land-based nuclear deterrent. The missile stands at a massive height of 60 feet with a fuselage diameter of 5 feet 6 inches. As of 2025, the United States has 400 Minuteman intercontinental ballistic missiles deployed, fully armed, ready to be launched from their silos at the President's command. These 400 missiles have a range of over 6,000 miles and have near pinpoint accuracy. When launched, the three-stage Minuteman III travels at speeds of over 15,000 miles per hour, reaching its target in under 30 minutes. The Minuteman III has a weight of 79,432 pounds and is composed of two main sections, the boost section and the re-entry vehicle section. Mounted at the top of the missile is an 800-pound, 300-kiloton W87 thermonuclear warhead. The warhead has over 40 times the explosive power of the bomb dropped over Hiroshima. The warhead is housed in a Mark 21 re-entry vehicle, also known as the Advanced Ballistic Re-entry Vehicle. Its design affords the warhead greater accuracy. It has a length of 68.9 inches and a diameter of 21.3 inches. The Mark 21 re-entry vehicle has a heavier weight than other re-entry vehicles in America's nuclear arsenal, but they are more accurate, possessing a circular error probability of detonating no less than 400 feet from their target. The Mark 21 re-entry vehicle is divided into three sections, the forward section, the body section, and the rear cover section. The forward section consists of the nose tip assembly and the thermonuclear warhead's bomb fuse. The Mark 21's fuse has two functions. A contact fuse activated during ground burst detonations when attacking hardened military targets and an inertial fuse utilized for air burst detonations when targeting large population centers. The body section houses the bomb's arming assembly. Inside this section is the bomb's firing system, an analog computer, and a battery to power the bomb's various instruments used to trigger the nuclear detonation. The next component of the body section is a two-stage 300 kiloton thermonuclear warhead consisting of a primary stage and secondary stage. The primary stage or fission trigger is comprised of a deuterium tritium core encased in a beryllium shell surrounded by a sphere of plutonium-239, covered by an explosive lens. The secondary stage, or fusion device, consists of a core of uranium-235, surrounded by lithium deuteride, which acts as fusion fuel. All of these components are encased in a sphere of uranium-238, or 235, which acts as a spark plug for the bomb. Both the primary and secondary stage are surrounded by polystyrene foam, which helps irradiate the bomb during detonation. Surrounding the foam is a case made of uranium-238. Its job is to reflect X-rays during the nuclear chain reaction. Located outside the uranium-238 case is the internal neutron generator. This component is responsible for emitting neutrons essential for the nuclear chain reaction. The primary stage, fission, triggers the secondary stage, fusion. The result is an extremely powerful and theoretically limitless explosion. The rear cover section houses the Mark 21 spin generator system, which stabilizes the warhead upon re-entry in the Earth's upper atmosphere. The next component of the re-entry vehicle section is the Minuteman 3's guidance system. The guidance system contains over 17,000 electronic and mechanical parts, costing $510,000 when introduced, or $4.5 million in current dollars. The heart of the guidance system is the gyro-stabilized platform, which uses gyroscopes and accelerometers to measure the missile's orientation and acceleration. The computer uses the measurements from the platform to determine the missile's position and guide the missile on its trajectory to the target. 
over 6,000 miles away, with near pinpoint accuracy. Other key components are the Missile Guidance Set Controller, which contains electronics to support the gyro-stabilized platform, and the amplifier, which interfaces the computer with the rest of the missile. The last but possibly the most important part of the re-entry vehicle section is the post-boost vehicle, also known as the payload bus. The function of the payload bus comes into action as soon as the final third stage solid rocket booster has been jettisoned. The post-boost vehicle then begins its final precise maneuvering to position and release the re-entry vehicle at its precise point, providing the RV the ability to strike its target with extreme accuracy. Unlike the solid propellant lower stages, the post-boost system carried liquid propellants to help steer the missile. The post-boost vehicle is comprised of a gas storage assembly, two propellant storage tanks containing a hypergolic mixture of nitrogen tetroxide as the oxidizing agent and monomethyl hydrazine as the fuel, a gimbal axial engine, a total of 16 altitude controlled engines, all of which are interconnected to the propellant manifold and single nozzle that provides thrust. Upon precise electronic commands, the system activates small bursts of thrust from 16 equidistant nozzles around the wall of the missile, thereby correcting its altitude when delivering the nuclear weapon to its target. The Minuteman III needs a powerful engine to deliver its 800-pound thermonuclear warhead up to 6,000 miles distance. Actually, it needs three. The first stage rocket booster, manufactured by Theocol, weighs a total of 51,251 pounds, stands 18.6 feet tall, and is 5.5 feet wide in diameter. The motor case material is made of D6AC steel. Inside the first stage is a thin layer of insulation, followed by the solid fuel rocket propellant. The weight of the propellant itself is 45,670 pounds. Near the top of the propellant is the igniter, which sets off the rocket's launch. The cylindrical hole in the propellant acts as a combustion chamber. The Theocol first stage solid rocket booster produces a total of 200,400 pounds of thrust, allowing the Minuteman to reach an altitude of 100,000 feet or 19 miles above the Earth's stratosphere. The second stage solid fuel rocket booster, manufactured by Aerojet, used improved 6AL4V titanium as its motor case material. Its total weight is 16,039 pounds, and the propellant alone weighs 13,680 pounds. The second stage booster has a length of 9.1 feet and a diameter of 4.3 feet. The maximum thrust for this booster is 60,700 pounds, allowing the Minuteman to reach an altitude of 300,000 feet or 57 miles into the Earth's thermosphere reaching the very edge of outer space in less than two minutes after launch. The third stage booster was manufactured by the CSD company. The motor case material used for this booster was made from a lighter S901 fiberglass. Total weight of this booster was 8,187 pounds and the propellant alone weighed 7,292 pounds. The third stage booster has a length of 5.5 feet and a diameter of 4.3 feet. The maximum thrust of the third stage booster is 34,500 pounds, and the solid booster fuel is depleted only 60 seconds after ignition. On the side of the missile is a thin metal pipe, also known as the missile's raceway. The raceway houses various wiring and self-destruct charges used to break off each stage after their fuel has been exhausted. Between each booster stage are pieces of metal called interstages. These securely hold the rocket's upper stages, protect the nozzle extensions of the upper stages, avoid dangerous pressure buildup in each upper stage engine, help secure each stage, and ensure a safe distance after each stage separation.
During the first stage of the flight, the missile guidance set controls the missile's direction by manipulating the first stage rocket booster's nozzles, keeping the missile on the precise course required to deliver its thermonuclear warhead to its designated target. The guidance computer constantly compares the missile's position to the desired trajectory and generates the appropriate steering commands to keep the missile on track. The nozzles, which move in response to commands issued by the guidance system to the nozzle control units, control the altitude of the missile during the first stage of flight. The pair of laterally opposed nozzles pivot up and down for pitch control. The vertically opposed pair pivots sideways for yaw control and in opposition for roll control. All four nozzles are used to maintain roll stability. In the silo, the roll angle, the azimuth, is aligned with the direction to the target. The missile takes off vertically, and then the missile gradually rotates along the pitch axis to tilt over toward the target. During flight, adjustments along all three axes keep the missile on target. The Minuteman 3 has four rocket stages, so the guidance computer jettisons each rocket stage and ignites the next stage in sequence. After 60 seconds, the first stage motor expends its fuel and the first stage is complete. An explosive charge in the first interstage detonates separating the first stage from the missile and the second stage motor ignites. The missile is currently 18 nautical miles or 100,000 feet above the Earth's surface. At T plus 78 seconds, an explosive charge in the second interstage detonates, separating it from the missile. At T plus 120 seconds, the missile's RV shroud is ejected at an altitude of 315,000 feet. Two seconds later, 90 nautical miles above the Earth's surface, after receiving a message from the missile's guidance system, the Stage 2 Interstage Separation Explosive Kit disconnects the longitudinal tension members near the third stage nozzle exit plane. This jettisons the interstage skirt exactly one second after the third stage motor ignites. Once the third stage booster's thrust terminates, the Thrust Termination System Ordnance, on command from the Guidance System, opens ports in the Minuteman 3's third stage motors. This results in reduced motor pressure and provides reverse thrust for third stage deceleration and separation from the post-boost vehicle. For the Minuteman 3, the Thrust Termination System, called the All Ordnance Thrust Termination System, consists of six equally spaced thrust termination ports placed at the top of the rocket motor. Installed at the base of each port, next to the top of the motor case, is a ring assembly consisting of a retaining ring, a linear-shaped charge, a charge retainer, and other miscellaneous hardware. When the thrust termination system is initiated by the guidance system, a firing signal is sent through the arm-disarm device to the linear-shaped charge. A plasma jet from the linear-shaped charge cuts through the motor case, allowing the motor combustion gases to escape through the thrust termination stacks. This causes deceleration of the third stage and positive separation from the post-boost vehicle. Upon precise electronic commands, the post-boost vehicle activates small bursts of thrust from 16 equidistant nozzles around the wall of the missile, maneuvering to its predetermined window in space. Following the transmission of the required signals for timing and warhead arming from the missile guidance system, the re-entry vehicle is separated electrically and mechanically from the post-boost vehicle. Before re-entering the Earth's atmosphere, the Mark 21 spin gas generators in the aft section ignite, stabilizing the warhead as it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. The Minuteman 3's warhead penetration aids consist of two chaff dispensers and a chaff attachment kit. Each dispenser is an electromechanical device which stores chaff and dispenses it in the required pattern of cloud geometry. The chaff consists of numerous depoles of varying lengths 
which are released in groups in response to discrete signals from the missile guidance system. The signals and electronic controls govern the ejection velocity and feed rate. The chaff attachment kit consists of the mechanical attachment fixtures, electrical harnesses, and electronic control and power distribution components. Releasing chaff helps disrupt the enemy's countermeasures like radar and anti-ballistic missile systems, allowing the warhead to reach its target. Over the capital of China, the city of Beijing with a population of 22 million Chinese civilians at a height of 6,860 feet, the 300 kiloton W87 warhead's trigger is activated. The high explosives surrounding the core of the primary stage fire, compressing the fissile material into a supercritical state and beginning the fission chain reaction. The fissioning primary stage emits thermal X-rays, which reflect along the inside of the casing, irradiating the polystyrene foam. The irradiated foam becomes a hot plasma, pushing against the tamper of the secondary stage, compressing it tightly, and beginning the fission chain reaction in the secondary stage. Pushed by both the primary and the secondary stage, the lithium deuteride fuel is highly compressed and heated to thermonuclear temperatures. Also, by being bombarded with neutrons, each lithium-6 atom splits into one tritium atom and one alpha particle, then begins a fusion reaction between the tritium and the deuterium, releasing even more neutrons and a huge amount of energy. The fuel undergoing the fusion reaction emits a large flux of high-energy neutrons, which irradiates the uranium-238 case, causing it to undergo a fast fission reaction and a fireball begins to form. detonation, an intensely hot and luminous fireball is formed, expanding to a radius of 655 meters, vaporizing everything in its path. Those near the blast would be evaporated, and within a two-kilometer radius, all buildings would likely be destroyed, killing 120,000 Chinese civilians in the matter of seconds. Very soon after the explosion, a destructive blast wave develops and moves rapidly away from the fireball. Because of its extremely high temperature, the shock wave emitted would contain high levels of thermal radiation, causing third-degree burns and clothing to instantly ignite into flames. As a result, around half the people between 2 and 13 kilometers from the blast are killed from burns, debris, smoke, collapsed buildings, and radiation sickness which translates roughly into an additional 475,000 Chinese fatalities over a period of 60 seconds, raising the total death tally to 600,000.